we have a fair number of attendees at this point, so I think we are going to start the event. And welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to our presentation. My name is Allison Camardella, and I am the president of the North Shore Coalition Against Substance Abuse. Um, Okay, there's our start of our slideshow. So we are CASA. We are a community coalition dedicated to reducing youth substance use through prevention, education, community action, parent groups, youth groups, and reduced access to substances. We encourage all of you to go to www.nscasa.org to sign up as a member so that you never miss an event or a piece of important information, to donate to our organization, or simply to get educated on how to prevent youth substance use and abuse. Right. So the review of the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act is why we are here tonight and the local implementation of the law. So we want to review the key aspects of this act that was signed into New York law on March 31st, 2021. Uh, specifically, persons over 21 have, can have three mature and three immature cannabis plants within their private residence with a limit of six mature and six immature plants per household. So if you're keeping track at home, uh, that is up to 12 marijuana plants per household. Persons over 21 are allowed to possess up to three ounces of cannabis flower on their persons or up to 24 grams of concentrated cannabis. Plants can be stored within the person's private residence or on the grounds of their private residence. New Yorkers can have up to five pounds of cannabis in their private residence or on the grounds of their private residence. And the MRTA allows cannabis to be smoked or vaped anywhere that smoking tobacco is permitted. So one of the reasons that we are here tonight is to discuss the decisions that are being left to local governments. Specifically, the MRTA allows cannabis to be smoked or vaped anywhere that smoking tobacco is permitted. However, localities can more strictly regulate this smoking of marijuana. Also, counties, towns, cities, and villages can reasonably regulate, and I guess that is a question of what reasonably regulate means, personal cultivation of cannabis provided that a violation constitutes no more than an infraction and can be punishable by no more than $200 or less. Local governments cannot prohibit a person from engaging in personal cultivation. Also, local governments can opt out of allowing retail dispensaries or on-site consumption subject to permissive referendum, and we'll learn what that means tonight. Localities have until December 31st, 2021 to adopt a local law requesting the Cannabis Control Board prohibit the establishment of retail dispensaries and or on-site consumption within their jurisdiction. And lastly, voters who oppose the law will have the opportunity through signature gathering to put the measure on the ballot and potentially override the decision of the local government. No local law can be adopted to prohibit these establishments after December 31st, 2021. However, localities can pass a law to repeal a previously adopted prohibition after this date. So North Shore CASA is particularly focused on the community protections that are in place to protect the community and particularly our youth. Some of these include 
that cannabis retail stores and on-site consumption venues cannot be located within 500 feet of school grounds or within 200 feet of a house of worship. On-site consumption venues cannot permit or promote gambling, exposing or stimulating contests, fireworks, or other similar activities. Cannabis establishments cannot sell alcoholic beverages or possess a license or permit to sell alcoholic beverages on the same premises where cannabis products are sold. Valid proof of age will be required for all transactions. And lastly, home growers must take reasonable steps to ensure that the cultivated cannabis is in a secured place and not accessible to anyone under the age of 21. So that is just an overview of the law, but now we are going to turn the event over to our esteemed panel. Uh, so let me introduce, we have Mayor Elena Villafane, our Seacliff Mayor, Mayor Sandy Quenzel, Roslyn Harbors Mayor, Mayor Bernie Ryba, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, yes. our old Brookville mayor, our Good county evening. legislator, Delia Dirigi Witten of the 11th district, and our Nassau County Police Commissioner, Patrick Ryder. And from CASA, we have again myself, Allison Camardella, I'm the president of the organization, Kevin McGilloway is our vice president, and Bruce Kennedy is our treasurer, and we're all representing CASA this evening. So thank you all so, so much to our panelists for being here tonight. Um, and I would direct our attendees that there is a Q&A option on your screen. If you have specific questions for any of our panelists, please feel free to use that Q&A option there. And hopefully if we have time, we will get to some of those questions at the end of our presentation. So our first question, is to Commissioner Ryder. Um, could you please speak to how this new law will be enforced locally? And also what obstacles do you anticipate to enforcement, specifically as it relates to impaired driving, selling to underaged um, purchasers, violation of growing laws on premises and, and things of that nature? Uh, Commissioner Ryder, please take it from there. Oh, no. Did we lose him? Oh, he's muted. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, I'm pretty, I can hit the mute button. Um, so first of all, thank you all for, for, for putting this together and, and um, having me here to speak. This is complicated. It's complicated in a lot of ways. The laws are simple, but the laws have given a lot of leeway when it comes to how marijuana uh, and we, how we're going to enforce the laws that are put in place. The Office of Cannabis Management, OCM, that doesn't start for 18 months. So when we talk about cultivation in the house, that will not be legal, at least unless it's for a medical reason, until the 18 months is up. So we're, we're not there yet. That's about another year away. Um, and when we do get to that, we're going to have to address a lot of the cultivation in homes. And, and that's always been a problem for us because marijuana growers, they take over a house, they run an the electric build those way up you know that keeping the heat lamps the way to grow it and and again becomes an issue for us the second problem for us is the fact that the office in cannabis management is run under the state liquor authority so the state liquor authority enforces what we do in, in our establishments our, our restaurants and bars and so forth it's always been an issue with this sla part of things because they're just understaffed and don't have there's a huge amount of bars out there who gets to get the license to have a location to sell once it's been approved to sell in that area a lot of it goes to those who have been affected unfairly by the marijuana laws that are currently in place so it would go back to a lot of the poorer communities that a lot of these arrests occurred on they're going to get the they're going to get the priority over the license over say pat Ryder who wants to get it in his community of want to so it, unfortunately, it goes back to those poorer communities where they'll open up these establishments. And, and in fairness, there'll be plenty of other establishments that are gonna open up throughout our 
our, our county here, over 21, you can possess up to three ounces and forget the, the other concentrated cannabis because you know what? Nobody even knows how to measure that, right? So it's three ounces. So what is three ounces? Please don't walk around with a scale and take a bag out of your pocket and, and put it onto a scale and weigh the three ounces. So what is it, three ounces? It's a good sized bag of weed. Could it be for personal consumption? Put it to be for sale? Nobody is permitted to sell unless you are licensed by the Office of Cannab Cannabis and Management. Now it's like cigarettes. So under the age of 21, you can't smoke a legally smoke a, uh, is it 18, 18 with a cigarette? Under the age of 18, you can't smoke a cigarette. Under the age of 21, you can't smoke marijuana. It's unenforceable because I'm not stopping people that are smoking because it's legal to smoke it in the area that you're walking down the street and I'm going to go, I think he's under 21, so I'm going to stop him and ask him for ID. It's not going to stand up. And on top of it, they don't really, it's, it's, it's an amos, it's a, excuse me, it's a violation. It's non-criminal. So even if you're underage smoking that marijuana joint going down the street, it's going to be a violation and it's not criminal. Um, the biggest issue that we're going to see is where they're permitted to smoke it. Look, marijuana is being smoked forever. We all agree on that. Um, how, controlling it to get some revenue out of it. Okay, I'm fine with that. We, we, you know, it's better than, than the illegal sales. The black market has been shown around the country, everywhere that it's been legalized, that the black market thrives in the legalization area because we overtax it. And then what happens is there's always a cheaper way to sell it. And we're all consumers at heart. We want to go and buy the, the cheaper weed, right? We're going to go buy what is easier to, to um, uh, better uh, to, to, to uh, purchase and cheaper. So that's going to be a problem for us. The next thing is, where do they smoke it? Downtown, and I use Farmingdale. Farmingdale is a heavily, you go down there on a Friday or Saturday night, it's mob, right? Especially in the summertime. And it's kids throughout the bars and everything else. We have enough problems with the kids with the drinking. You add a, like they have a hookah lounge in town. If they make a marijuana, and again, this is, and I'm not putting this on the mayor in Farmingdale. I'm, I'm just using their example. If they put a lounge in there that you're allowed to smoke marijuana, they can't serve alcohol, but they can serve you marijuana. So you can go in there and get stoned. Now I got people coming out there that are stoned and I got drunks to begin with that I'm dealing with. So, and, and I use, again, not picking on farming though, because there's plenty of communities around Nassau County that are like that. So that's a problem. The next thing, driving while in, impaired drugs, always been complicated for us. Drinking is easy. Sir, can you step out of the car? Can you blow into the breathalyzer? If you refuse, you immediately get arrested, right? And it's an automatic suspension of your license. If you don't refuse and you take that breathalyzer and you fail the breathalyzer, well, then you get arrested. There's no breathalyzer for this. So we have what's called DREs, drug recognition experts. We only have about four or five in the entire county. It is an extremely difficult process to get people that are DREs trained. Can't search a vehicle anymore pull a car over and there's marijuana I can't go in and look for the rest of the marijuana I mean the smell of marijuana so I pull the vehicle over and it's Cheech and Chong and you open up the windows and everything's coming out I do not I am not permitted to go in and search that vehicle so I can't but I can ticket each everybody in the vehicle for smoking marijuana but I don't know who smoked the marijuana the driver says I didn't smoke any marijuana they smoked the marijuana it's illegal right he's in the area so, but he is not the person smoking and drinking presents a problem for us. And to be honest with you, we can get them out. We can do a best uh, SFST that we call that standard sobriety test, but it's difficult with marijuana. So again, we, we, we're, we're up against a lot of challenges when it comes to the marijuana stuff. And again, not being able to, to search the vehicles where we get a lot of our gun arrests along with the drugs that come with it. So again, sale of less than three ounces, to a person over 21 is a violation. So I'm not going to follow it. I'm going to go to black market. I'm going to get caught selling on the street. And you're going to come up to me. And the best the officer can do is write me a ticket and, and, and take the weed that I have on me. But I can be on a street corner selling weed now. And again, I guarantee it will come. If you look at Colorado, they've now gone to hallucinogenic mushrooms and so forth that they, they're expanding what they can now type of drug they can sell. And they've also got to, a, to an area where they are getting crushed 
in the retail side of it, they're not making the money that they thought they were going to make and fund these programs. So now they're going back and looking at how, how to reevaluate. So, and here's the last thing I'll say. In Colorado, they just unanimously passed their, on their board to, to what I forget what the, the amount of money that was put forward to, to do the research to study the effects of marijuana to our young kids under the age of 21. That was done already, but now they're doing it again. So you can see the problems and the challenges we have. And, 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 and when you're in your backyard and you're having that little five-year-old daughter's birthday party and the house next door is lighting up a big giant bong and him and his neighbors are all smoking weed in their backyard, it's legal. And it's, you can't, st and that smell travels a lot more than cigarette smoke. But we'll be getting called and the answer is going to be, we have no authority to go into their yard and stop them from doing it. So I give you my eight events. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I think we'll probably have some follow-up questions for you at the end as more of these topics you know, are discussed. I know I do have a few, but we'll, um, we'll continue on with our other panelists for now. Um, our first question is for all of our panelists. We would like to ask you to speak to the issues that your community and your leaders are grappling with with regard <laughs> Uh, regarding the new law and what process you are using to make your final decisions. Um, and I would like to start with legislator Jeriji Witten. Okay, you know what, she's- uh, Hi, I'm here, I'm sorry. I just, I literally just walked in the door. So. Would you like to so, come back to you in a sec? No, 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 I'm okay. good. Um, it was interesting to hear Commissioner Ryder. Thank you for always uh, really giving us the details with all this. Um, it's, it's uncharted territory. Um, there are some people in favor of making it legal, thinking that, um, you know, there'd, there'd be less of a draw to it. Um, more control of it, but to be honest, I, I really haven't seen any data that supports any of that. Um, so Nassau County, we've done a couple of things that we can do. We have banned um, the use of cannabis for, in any area that we banned smoking. So that's gonna include any um, county owned properties, any parks that the county owns. Um, and we also did something else, which I think will be effective, is we, we adjusted the, uh, um, the residence uh, legal obligation with, the, uh, with, with a cannabis, why is that? Uh, the host, the um, social host law to include um, cannabis. So people have to realize that if, if it goes on in their home and they're um, allowing kids to smoke this and God forbid, you know, someone gets in a car accident, um, the homeowner will now be responsible just as they would if they were hosting um, alcohol or other uh, um, substances. So um, we're doing what we can do. I, I have met with a number of other um, experts, including Dr. Reynolds, Jeffrey Reynolds, who I really consider the expert in this field. Um, and he is truly believes that um, marijuana is a real direct path towards other opioids. Um, he thinks it's a fast track. Um, and especially with kids that are under the age of 25, their brains are just, it's been proven that their, their brains are, are designed differently so that they become addicted so much quicker than um, those of us that are over 25. Um, the, receptor, the receptors in their brain are just, are just formed differently. So it's, um, it's real, like there's a real reason to be concerned. It's not just how strange it is for me to be talking about the availability of pot or growing up the way I did, where it was always, always like, you know, illegal and, and a, a serious problem to ever be around it. But now the fact that it's legal, I'm having a hard time grasping my own mind. But there is something, um, and Commissioner Ryder, you can confirm this. So we were told that, um, for the fine for being caught with smoking marijuana or vaping it is limited by the state. 
So if you're caught smoking a cigarette on county property, we can fine you $100, which is what we have in our, our ordinance. But if you're found smoking pot, we're limited to $25. So if you think about this, if you're caught smoking, you're better off saying it's pot than it is a cigarette on a county property. And that's the way our law is written. I mean, it's unbelievable to me, but you're better off getting caught smoking pot than smoking a cigarette as far as the fines go. So again, another counterintuitive uh, aspect of this and what Commissioner Ryder touched on, the fact that we don't have any way to, to really um, test for, uh, you know, if someone's driving under the influence. I mean, that that's also just another major concern. So again, the county's taking some steps to to do what we can on our level, but it's um, it's something I'm very concerned about as a parent and as a legislator. Thank you very much, um, legislator. I'm going to pose the same question to Mayor Quinzel. Um, if you could speak to the issues that your community is looking at as you make these. Okay. Decisions. Your audio was very low. Can everyone hear me as well? I don't know if it was the whole, it's the whole Zoom. Okay. Um, well, the village of Roslyn Harbor does not have many commercial properties. And accordingly, we see the concern of sales in our village to be very low. Certainly our concern is much lower than some of our neighboring villages that have much many more commercial areas. Um, however, at our May board meeting, we did discuss that we have the power to opt out of the Marijuana Tax and Reform Act until the end of December, 2021. So at that time, I asked the board members to consider all sides of the legislation and to speak to residents to find out what their thoughts are. As the situation continues to evolve, especially given the actions taken as of late by Nassau County and described by legislator Dirigi Witten just now, I did not know about the recent change. I took notes on it and I will talk to my board about it, the homeowner's responsibility. Um, that we decide to take a wait and see approach. We plan to revisit whether or not we will enact the local legislation that would now allow us to opt out by the end of the summer so that we will meet the December 31st deadline. Um, we realize that once we opt out that we can always opt back in at any time, but it doesn't really work and the vice versa. So that's where we are. Okay, thank I didn't you. get a sign, so I guess that's good. <laughs> You're right in time. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mayor Riva. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Coalition Against Substance Abuse for inviting me as a panelist this evening and for arranging for this uh, timely and informative panel discussion. Shortly after the new marijuana legislation was signed into law by the governor and at a subsequent board of trustees meeting in the village of Old Brookville, I and the village trustees had a brief discussion about the new law and the opportunity to opt out by passing a local law prior to December 31st. I and the village trustees were unanimous at that time in our thinking that the village of Old Brookville will definitely opt out of permitting retail dispensing and on-site consumption by December 31st. <clears throat> we expect to have this topic on our board's agenda once again in a month or two to start the process. So like the village of Roslyn Harbor, uh, we're waiting uh, to see what else uh, comes to our attention. I understand that the law is about 100 pages in length. There's a lot of detail, of course, associated with it. And so we were told by legal counsel to continue to wait so that more details would come out so that we could uh, address our local law appropriately. <clears throat> As some of you may be aware, the village does have limited commercial space at the Holiday Farm Shopping Center along Glen Cove Road. Currently, there are two vacant spaces in the strip mall in that shopping center that in reasonable proximity to a new and large childcare facility in Glenhead, which is located across the street on McCoon's Lane. While this facility may or may not be within the 500 foot retail exclusion distance from the two vacant strip mall spaces as provided by the new law, <clears throat> permitting a retail cannabis store at this site would be sending the wrong message, we feel, to those families that patronize the childcare facility and also to our residents who patronize the village's small shopping center. So I and the trustees simply do not want that type of retail establishment in our community because of the message that it sends. That's our position. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Mayor Villafane. 
Thank you for um, inviting me this evening and giving me a chance to uh, discuss um, what our board is doing and to hear from other local electeds as well as Commissioner Ryder. Our community at large is um, adjusting to this new legislation. Our board has had several conversations about this and um, we are having a meeting tomorrow, again, um, to discuss specifically the legislation and the impact that it will have on our community. Um, as has been mentioned, it's 100 pages long. It's quite in depth, but it also has a number of significant holes in it. Um, marijuana consumption and uh, sale is still illegal at the federal level. Um, consequently, we will be looking at businesses that are, will be cash-based predominantly because they are not legal at the federal level and they run into banking problems. We also are very, very concerned, as Commissioner Ryder discussed, about the idea that you can walk along the street and smoke marijuana, but you're not allowed to walk along the street and consume an alcoholic beverage. Um, we are working on uh, expanding our no smoking ban to follow the county's lead to provide that there is no smoking in, uh, in village parks and on village uh, property. And we are seriously considering um, the concept of opting out because as we all discussed, it's a, it's a one-time event. If you fail to opt out, you can't change your mind later on if you see that it's not going well in other communities. So it, it, action seems to dictate, but I'm speaking only for myself, my board has not come to a decision or in fact reach any um, emerging consensus on this issue as to whether we should forego that opportunity. Um, as I have said before, I don't necessarily want Seacliff to be the canary in the coal mine. I, I, I think that this is something that we have to watch the legislation itself be fleshed out. There's holes in it that need to be addressed. See the alcohol, um, see the marijuana control board established and let us look and see before we jump into the pool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our second question, a number of you have addressed on some level and Mayor Villafane, you did just talk about uh, the issues with smoking marijuana where you can smoke cigarettes but you can't necessarily smoke alcohol. And in, in my position as the president of the coalition, that is something that I find baffling, that it's treated as a cigarette would be as opposed to a mind or mood altering substance. So that you know takes us, and again, some of you have commented, but I'll just give you another opportunity if you have anything more to add. Um, where is marijuana currently allowed in your particular areas, localities? Do you foresee any change in that policy in the future? And can you speak to that? And Mayor Rive, I'll, I'll start with you on that. Well, that's uh, something that we have not discussed at the board level. Um, I will say that uh, I do not anticipate any change in that policy regarding where smoking is allowed and where it is not allowed. Uh, haven't heard anything uh, from the residents in any respect regarding permitting of smoking uh, in public building or in the uh, shopping area, what have you. So uh, I'm going to say that uh, we're going to uh, remain as is uh, with our smoking policy. Okay. Mayor Villafane, do you have any further comment on that regarding Seacliff? I believe it's something that is very um, important for our community because even cigarette smoke at the beach can be objectionable to people around you. And to now put ourselves in a position that cannabis is treated differently, especially when you consider the conundrum that legislature, legislator Witten discussed that it's, it's cheaper to get caught with a marijuana cigarette than it is to get caught with a um, cigarette. So, and I, I foresee, unfortunately, we've all experienced the situation where you're walking down the street or you're in your car and you get hit with just a, a, a cloud of smoke. And it's, um, it, it's not something that we as a community want to encourage. And we would like to figure out how to move forward in keeping it 
out of village uh, facilities. Thank you. Legislator Georgie Whitten. Did you call on me? Uh, no, I was calling on uh, Legislator uh, Dirigi Witten. Um, her microphone is off right now. So, Mayor Quinsell, I am right here. Now. I apologize. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you for a second. Can, is my microphone very poor? Is that? It's coming in and out. No, no. It's, it was probably, I had background noise here, no. my family. We were discussing discussing the issue of where you can currently smoke marijuana, and that it's wherever uh, cigarette smoking is is legal. And is there any effort or thought of changing? Um, the law seems to allow for a change in that. And is there any discussion um, in the district to change that? Well, oh. so I would have to find out from council commissioner. Are you still on the phone? Or did he have to leave? No, I'm here. I, I don't know how, what our jurisdiction is over anything other than what the county owns. That's right. We so each township will have their own decision to make. Within the county, we have all county parks and stuff. But our legislators right. have already voted that you, wherever you can't smoke a cigarette, you can't smoke marijuana. Correct. So I don't. I don't think we have any more jurisdiction over any other area, um, and we can't dictate. Um, what goes on, you know, in the households um, as, as legislators. And, and that was purposely why it was given back to the townships, because there are three townships, not one county making the decision for the three. Okay, and Mayor Quinzel? Well, as I was preparing for this meeting this evening, it became apparent to me that we do not currently have a local law uh, regarding smoking in public places in the village of Rosen Harbor. So as such, we will be considering said legislation at the same time as we consider any opt-out legislation for sure. And we just wanna note again, what legislator Dirigi Witten said is that the county has recently passed legislation prohibiting the use of marijuana on all of its public property. So we'll be discussing that as well. But also just take a look at that law. It's unbelievable that we can only charge $25 you know, per incident with marijuana. I mean, it just drives me crazy that you know, you can do pretty much whatever you want with cigarettes, but with marijuana, the state limited it to $25. Okay. Um, further, uh, we know that the law states that town, cities, and villages can opt out, as we've been discussing here tonight. Um, that is subject to a permissive referendum. Um, I just wanted to ask you to speak to pros and cons that you are um, looking at in the opt-out process. Obviously, there, there are tax benefits that have been highlighted by those proponents of um, having these uh, retail shops. Um, is that something that you are looking at as a major issue for your villages? Um, and just speak to the pros and cons of, of those issues. Uh, so, Mayor Villafane, if you could start, and if and if you could just speak to what a permissive referendum is and how that works. Okay. Um, so, a permissive referendum allows your um, constituents to overturn basically um, a resolution that was made by the board of trustees or whatever the structure is in your municipality. So, if for example, the village of Seacliff were to vote to opt out, it would be subject to permissive referendum. And that allows residents to come together by, by a petition to have a measure placed on the ballot to reverse the judgment of the village board on that particular issue. There are a number of rules around it and uh, fairly uh, short time uh, limitations within 10 days after the adoption of the resolution. The um, clerk of, has to give notice of the resolution in a, a local newspaper. The resolution will not take effect until 45 days after its adoption or when a majority of the, um, there's a formula for 10% of the people who voted in the last government uh, election for go governor, if they file a petition, then I, uh, there will be a referendum put on the ballot to turn back 
the uh, vote by the board of trustees to um, opt out. So um, if nothing is done, the opt out would become law. So it gives your residents an opportunity to um, reverse the decision of the board of trustees. But in terms of the monetary piece for, for this, the village of Seacliff would be in a position that if the town of Oyster Bay were to adopt, um, were to opt in and the village opted in, the 4% would be split and the village of Seacliff would only get 1%. In our current economic climate, I'm not really one to turn my on any money, but this, I don't know that this money would be worth it. I mean, it's, um, there's so many things that are attendant to um, the enforcement and the management of it. It would require a long, hard look at our zoning code, our planning code, to see where and how we would want to manage this in our village. We have the main strip in C and Seacliff Avenue, and then we have Glen Cove Avenue, but we also happen to have the middle school at the terminus of Seacliff um, and the high school across the street in Glenhead. So there would be, a, I believe, a, a, a significant effort on, beho on behalf of the village legislatively to look at this and manage it going forward. And the 1%, I have to tell you, doesn't, doesn't necessarily move the needle for me. Um, I can't, and again, I'm only speaking for myself. My board hasn't really reached the point where we've uh, had a deep enough dive in this that we have formed consensus and we have a plan going forward. But these are, you know, these are very, very serious considerations. You know, we're, we're, we're a community, basically we're a family-based community. We have um, an elementary school right in the middle of the village. We have a daycare center, we have numerous churches and I would say that this is this is something that we as guardians of the future in our children really owe a major, major hard look at. And I don't think it's a look that can be done by December 31st. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor Ryba, do you have any further comments on that question? Uh, yes, I do. And, and Mayor Villafane, uh, your, your comments are well taken. I'd just like to elaborate on uh, one aspect of what you've just said, and that is uh, the pro of opting out is that uh, you can always opt back in. And by uh, opting out and by taking the time to see if some of these excesses in the present law are corrected by the legislature and then signed in uh, as changes to the law by the governor, say, within the next 12 to 18 months, uh, some of these communities that have opted out may be tempted to opt back in because they're satisfied with the kind of changes that have been made in order to address the concerns that their community has expressed. So you don't lose anything by opting out, except for if you uh, are looking at the sales taxes associated with the retail sales in your community, which we have heard and uh, they are going to be immaterial. So that hasn't played any part in our decision-making in the village of Old Brookville, meaning the sales taxes. You know, we're looking at the decision itself, what kind of message that it sends. Um, and um, you know, we're set that uh, we will uh, continue to uh, schedule these uh, follow-on meetings in September or October giving additional time to our uh, legal counsel to inform us if there's any other <sighs> topics in here that are nuances that we should be aware of. So um, that's our position at this time. Um, it's uh, it's uh, going to evolve, uh, I, I, I'm relatively sure. I think that uh, the concerns that uh, Commissioner Ryder has pointed out is going to play a role in this as well. Uh, it's a very, if, if there's one message that we're getting across here, it's a very, very complicated area. And even though some of these states have legalized marijuana several years before us, you know, we're still struggling with these kinds of issues. So I don't see these issues going away uh, anytime soon, quite frankly. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and Mayor Quenzel? 
I don't see too many pros for the village of Roslyn Harbor in this other pros and other, you know, certainly giving some taxes. I don't see too much of that coming to the way of Roslyn Harbor. Um, the cons, I'll just have to speak more as a parent of young teenagers. I mean, COVID did a number on the young teens. They already walk around brain dead, if you ask me, staring, their overuse of technology and social media. I, I can't imagine another further distraction. I hear exactly what um, Mayor Ryder is saying and uh, Mayor Bill of Fain as far as the, the you know, the, the areas that the, the children will be congregating. I mean, we saw an uptick in our little village hall and our little piece of the map, which is right in the center of village Roslyn Harbor, that they hang out in our parking lot. And they just, they because they had nowhere to go. So they come, they hang out in the parking lot and they do what they do in their car. I have no idea. I can only imagine how much worse it will get with that. So um, that's my position. Thank you. And legislator Deruji Witten, do you have any comments on the pros and cons associated with opting in and out? You know, um, we've been, you know, obviously the county's always been in financial problem, you know, dire straits. And um, there have been opportunities where uh, you could make revenue off of certain things. And this is one of them. Another one is the gambling. Um, and as a mom also, a mom of three, I you have to weigh the pros and the cons. I would much rather find money somewhere else. Um, you know, just as gambling can ruin someone's life, I truly believe marijuana can ruin someone's life. And look, do I know that kids can get marijuana anywhere before this or yes, probably. But us saying it's legal, us saying it's available, there, there's some message that comes with that. And it's that it's okay. And, you know, again, I, I know I sound like, you know, maybe I sound, I don't know what I sound like as a mom, maybe overly strict or overly worried, but look, they, I also deal with um, so many parents that have lost kids to opioid overdoses that have lost kids to DWIs. You never, you never want to have any part of that. So my conscious is it's, it's the, the pros don't, don't come anywhere close to the cons in this situation. You, you really don't ever want to make money for for a municipality off of your children using marijuana. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I, I really think that a big, I know that a lot of people that are in favor of having it be, be um, legal, but I think a big reason that the state pushed it and the big reason why the fines are so low is because it, it's a money maker and that's that's all that they want it to be and you know again as elected officials and as parents much more probably as parents of course you know I, I don't I don't want any part of it so I don't have the same power that you guys have but uh I say you know I, I would opt out if I was in your situation Thank you very much. And I'm, I would just say I'm uh, the head of this organization. I'm very heartened to hear how each and every one of you is really taking youth health and uh, into account when making these decisions. Um, it's in, in incredibly important. Um, and I'm going to ask Bruce, he's been kind of looking over our Q&A board to see as some questions are coming in. Um, Bruce, are there some Questions for our panelists? You're muted. You of course I am. <laughs> I don't want, want the dog to stop barking. Uh, it, it appears that most of these questions are going to be uh, aimed at uh, Commissioner Ryder. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I mean, there's one, there's one question here. Uh, that uh, anyone could answer, but I don't think anyone's an expert here. To what extent do you think marijuana impairs drivers? Worse than alcohol or about the same? I'm going to say it's about the same. You know, look, it all depends on the alcohol and how much you consume. It's also the amount of marijuana and how much you consume and how potent it is. You know, the state may regulate, but I don't know if you've driven down su the southern state these days. All you do is smell weed. People are smoking weed and driving down the southern state like crazy. I will say I don't see it on the, the back streets in the neighborhoods yet, but it'll come. And, you know, so it's, it's a dangerous mix. Anytime you mix any kind of substance with driving, because you're including this thing, 
right? The phone, but it's, 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 we've got, listen, I, I, I like to brag sometimes we're the safest county in America, but that safest also comes to death on the roads, accidents on the road, not just crime. And that, that's a great place to be, but tell that to the mother of the, uh, the child that just got ran over because somebody is stoned, you know, because they cut out of class and they're 18 years old and they get high and then they drive the car that they shouldn't be driving. And then they run the kid over crossing you know, from an elementary school. So it, it's going to be the first time that somebody dies in this situation, it's going to be the, the bells and start ringing. I will say this to all the elected officials. I'm not elected, right? I, I am telling you what your biggest headache is going to be. Not the kid driving, not the kid stoned at home, your, uh, not the overdose, none of that. Your biggest problem is going to be the neighbor that's in his backyard and they're spilling over the fence as they're trying to have a peaceful party and somebody's smoking a joint and that it just reeks right now. The potency of marijuana is off the hook. And again, it's just got this, this very pundit smell that will that will reach into all your yards and then your phones are going to be blowing up and your cops can't do anything thank you yep uh another one uh, it was spoken in, in the opening um allison had spoken about the possession you could have up to five pounds of marijuana or the flour or three ounces of the concentrated cannabis could anyone explain what the difference is? So the five pounds is what you can cultivate and grow in your house, but that can't be done until the Office of Cannabis Management is in place. They say that was an 18 months old, maybe we're about a year from now. That has to be in place to do that. This is, we treat marijuana like, like tobacco, but it's controlled by the ABC, the Alcohol Beverage Control Laws, right? So again, that, that's a confusing, part in it. If you possess more than three ounces, it's a violation. It's a ticket. It's not a, you got to get heavyweight before I start making it a misdemeanor or a felony. But if you possess more than three ounces, it's a violation. We're going to write you a ticket. Anything under three ounces is legal to possess. Smoking in public is legal to do where they allow you to smoke cigarettes. So here's my question. Most bars allow you to step outside to go smoke a cigarette. So now can you go out and smoke a joint where they, the same place you smoke a cigarette? Again, they're not supposed to allow marijuana with alcohol in the same environment, but who's going to enforce that? And how are we going to enforce it? You know, it's in the backyard of these bars that, you know, are all over Nassau County. Again, the bar can enforce it. And again, they may not want the headache of what comes with it. The other thing is the age limit. And again, when you're looking at juveniles, Nobody's allowed to sell it, but an establishment, right? Somebody that is licensed to sell it. But how do I know the kid is less than 18 years or less than 21 years of age? Just like cigarettes, less than 18. Less than 21, I don't know who the kid is. I don't know how to prove that he's smoking a joint. We're having enough problems with police reform on that we're stopping too many people. And because we're being told because of, it, it's because of race or what any other reason, now we're going to tell them to stop this kid because he's under 21 and go write him a ticket. And, and, and dealing not to correct you, but I think it's $50, not 25, but it's a $50 fine um, still, but it's a ticket. But that's if my cop is gonna do that. You're putting him in a really bad position. You know what? Check. So, so you put the cop in a really bad position that now they're gonna have to try to enforce this. It's the same way of the, that party that you're having in the backyard and, the, and it's spilling all over the wall. I mean, uh, and I mean, we have a another question about what is the town of Oyster Bay's official position? Uh, we don't have a representative from the town of Oyster Bay here, but they did pass a law uh, as it relates to zoning that only dispensaries can only be opened in light industrial areas and not within a thousand feet of a school church or um, or something else. But, you know, whether they're gonna opt that or not, I don't know. Um, another question was more of a statement, just basically, um, and it'd be interesting um, if Commissioner Ryder could answer this, that in certain areas, it's found that marijuana smoking is being used to actually taunt the police. 
Is that something that is currently occurring? Well, you, you see what's going on in the city of New York and all your major cities around the country. They're taunting their police in a lot of different ways, right? I, I was out in Suffolk County yesterday and the dirt bikes that are out there with no plates and they're just driving by and if they want, we're, we're, we're never gonna chase dirt bikes because we can't win that race, you lose. And in the process of chasing that dirt bike, they're gonna hit some kid and, and, and it's gonna be worse. So, but the number one complaint I get on weekends now is dirt bikes and the loud noise and fireworks. Now, I, um, marijuana will be on the top of the list. I was waiting for at the Belmont and, you know, you can go out at the Belmont. I was there for the um, the the, uh, the Belmont uh, stakes, and you know you can smoke cigars outside. If you can smoke cigars outside, you can smoke marijuana outside. And I didn't see it, so maybe it's just the crowd type, and and the kids were doing plenty of drinking, so I guess they didn't have to smoke marijuana. But it's going to happen, and then they're going to be in the middle of these where you allow, and that's why the county was smart to enact that law that, it, you know, where you cannot smoke on government and, and, and county property. But it's not going to stop your neighbor. Um, I'm going to jump in um, quickly uh, to ask a question of Commissioner Ryder. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of what was going on in Long Beach uh, last week. It was in the news about Trips Ahoy cookies that were being sold. Um, I know the superintendent of Long Beach brought it to the community's attention that, that this product was being sold. Can you just illuminate for me? I, I was confused because you're saying it's not fully legal to sell for 18 months. So how was this being sold in Long Beach and what are the protections that we have in place that things that are clearly marketed to kids um, can get, you know, stopped and not get into kids' hands. Right. So, so this was the, the liquid THC that was into these edibles, if you will, not, not the actual cannabis. Cannabis is 18 months. Uh, a lot of the other stuff is starting to come on market along with, um, you know, uh, the CBD oils and stuff, right? CBD oils, and, and again, there's nothing bad about a CBD oil, allegedly. So but this was THC that was in the product. That's correct. And so what happens is, if you ate just the one cookie, you're fine. When's the last time any of you went into the Oreo cookie jar and only ate one cookie, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happened was these kids were overdosing because they were eating three or four cookies and it was causing a big problem. Again, this is what happens with edibles, gummy bears. When's the last time, not that I would eat a gummy bear anymore, but, but kids would eat gummy bears and you, know, you put the gummy bear for the kid over here and you put the gummy bear for the parent over here next thing you know it's mixed up and the kids are eating gummy bears and they got thc in it so that's what happened in that case the 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 cookies had one cookie was fine in the in their level but what happened was because they ate 10 cookies they were overdosing and having the problems okay thank you bruce were there any other questions or is that well it, well it's actually a question that the all the, and the mayors would be interested, I think, in, in having this question answered uh, and the legislator and particularly uh, the commissioner can answer it. If the local municipalities start looking at this, that the public smoking, of course, that's a bad thing to begin with. No one wants a face full of, uh, of smoke. But now with marijuana, if the local municipalities start outlawing any smoking in any public places, does the Nassau County Police Department have the capacity to enforce that? So in, in uh, if everybody decided to light up a joint on the street corner, no, the answer is no. But you could start writing people. You know, I, I do the same issue when we have car shows and stuff that are illegal. Go in there and start writing tickets to those that are violating the law. All of a sudden, the, the guy who doesn't want the trouble is going to drive away. It brings your crowd smaller. So the same thing happens with, with if, they, if you outlawed smoking, in, in any area in your public downtown area and somebody's walking down the street with a joint, we've been able to enforce it that we know that we write local ordinances all the time. But if 20 people are doing it at the same time, well, we'll just start picking them off one at a time. And, and, and then they, nobody wants to get hit with, even if it is a $50 fine when they, they you know, so I don't, I don't think there'd be a problem. We can enforce it. We won't have the capacity if everybody starts lighting up, but I think we'd be all right. Okay. 
And I don't have any other questions up here at this moment, Allison. We do. We did have one more that just came in. Oh. Um, just confusion over if smoking cigarettes in Nassau County parks. Oh, if the law becomes, um, if it's automatically the same in the villages. So if. No, and the answer to that is no. Yeah. Okay, so the villages have to make their own law. And the, town, and the towns. Yes. The county can do that for all town parks, uh, for all county parks. Okay. All right. Thank you. And there is another one that just came in. So I just don't want to smell it. I don't do much about it, correct? What about all the young and old people with allergies? Yeah, well, yeah, it's someone that's concerned about the awful smell, allergies to smoke, um, that these are things that the mayor should be considering when considering potential opting out and smoking laws. Um, and I will just give an opportunity if any of our panelists have a question for each other or for Commissioner Ryder, I would like to just give you an opportunity to, to share amongst yourselves before I start wrapping up. So I'll ask a quick question. So I, I mentioned that we were gonna be considering uh, the legislation on smoking banning, let's say. So let's say Rosin Harbor puts this in place. If we see someone smoking pot in our park, which is attached to the village hall, do we write them a ticket to come to village hall court or do we call our precinct and say, okay, you write the ticket or perhaps even both. There would be. Yeah, we, we, would, you would, we would write it to, cause it's a village ordinance. We'd write it as a village ordinance to the village okay. court. And then you would issue whatever, but as the legislator uh, said earlier, you can only up to the amount of the fine that they say. No, so it's still regulated by the state. Right, but it would still be a ticket on their record that isn't gonna Correct. look yep. good perhaps for their employer or for whatnot. So maybe right. the, the fine isn't what deters them. Correct. Uh, are you, are uh, Commissioner, uh, could I ask, uh, would the county consider hiring more experts uh, for these violations. You had mentioned earlier during the discussion that at this point in time, the county has four to five, uh, yeah, but the, 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 you know, the uh, retail establishments uh, are not in effect at this point in time. Do you foresee more of these individuals being retained? Yeah, so they are police officers, so it's just getting them trained. So like our dogs, we had canine dogs that were trained for marijuana. We're retraining them dogs all over now. That's a very big expense to us because the training and the time that you put into a dog now has to be retrained and, you know, muscle memory in the dog too. So we're training a, a bunch of new officers now on DREs so we can have more. But, but you know, it's, it's a lot easier to train you how to use the instrument than it is how you to be the expert. And now I'm going to get called at the court as my expertise on why I believe that person was impaired. But I got nothing to prove it. If, you know, before it's the breath test or the blood test if you were in an auto accident. Now I got nothing. I got no, 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 it's my word against that person's word. So we all know what happens is then the defense counsels go, let's go to trial. And then deals are cut constantly because nobody wants to go to trial in time and expense over mm. marijuana. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. And one other question uh, Would this training be made available to? Uh, representatives of local police forces in Nassau County. Sure, we can we can offer that up to everybody. Once we start doing it, we'll offer them just like we do all of our in-service training. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Ryder, I, I just have a, a clarifying question. If a person is ticketed and found guilty for smoking marijuana in a public park, isn't it a, akin to like a parking ticket? It's not anything that ever follow them. It's so there is no real deterrent in getting that ticket other than that you have to pay the fine. Well, it, right. Correct. But it does stay on your record. So in your employment, you know, if you got five tickets. You, you, you obviously have this character that you're, you, you disregard the law, you know, that you want to go smoke marijuana. You're still breaking a law, whether it's a local ordinance or uh, a penal law violation, but you, it's marijuana, it's legal, but it's not legal here. So it does show that you, your moral character. Oh, I, I was under the impression that because it was a violation, it, it was something that did, didn't get reported. I'm glad to hear that it will. Oh, it does. Okay. But also social, social media will follow you. So there's really not much you can do without your social media friends and enemies finding out, so. So 
as we are, before we start wrapping up for tonight, I am going to ask each panelist to share with the audience if they have a particular question on this topic for their representative, or if they would like to have their voices heard on this topic, how, what is the best way for them to get in touch with each one of you and your, and your offices? Uh, Mayor Villafane? Um, one of the things that our board is doing is that we are informally meeting with uh, resident groups. And when we see people, we've all kind of tasked ourselves with trying to figure out what the temperature in our community is. And um, I would welcome anyone who wanted to engage and let me know their individual thoughts. I can be reached through um, a phone call to Village Hall. I have regular office hours in Village Hall the first and third Monday of every month. And I, if they call Village Hall, they can make an appointment. I have, um, and I have a village email that they can contact me at as well. Thank you, Mayor Quinzel. Uh, in addition, you can contact me at the um, mayor at rosinharbor.org. You can send a question through our website if you're so inclined, but email is always the best or to, to clerk rosinharbor.org. So we'll get any questions answered and any communication. And also I encourage you if there are any Rosin Harbor residents on on this call or um, to please start coming to our meetings. I did speak to the other mayors before the call started. Their meetings as well, in addition to Rosin Harbor's meetings are now gonna be in, per in person. So come and have your voice heard and come hear what's going on and please let us know how you feel. Thank you, Mayor Riva. Well, uh, similar to Roslyn Harbor, for anyone interested in contacting the village on this issue, our website affords the opportunity to submit a question on this or any other matter. Uh, people in my community can also uh, email me directly at mayor at oldbrookville.net or our village wall at village at oldbrookville.net. Thank you. And finally, legislator Jersey Witten. Hi. Okay. Um, Uh, we don't so, thinking. legislator we don't have county a I'd be as legislation um, let I'm sorry put in the chat the best way to reach out um, yes okay I apologize I hope this is better um so what I would do if you'd like to reach me my telephone number is 516. 571-6211. My email is located at the county um, website under District 11, or else it's D. Dirigi Witten um, at Nassau County NY.gov. So I was just thinking if you if anyone wants a copy of what um, the legislation that we wrote on the county level to ban um, the smoking at parks, we could always give that to you. I could always send that to you. It just helps sometimes when, if you're gonna write your own people, you have something to, uh, yeah. you know, to start with. Excellent. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry if I was a little disheveled today. It was just, ledge, ledge meetings are a little long and I'm a little, it's just been a long day, but I, uh, I really enjoyed this and I really appreciate being part of it. Well, we really appreciate everybody's participation tonight. Thank you all so, so much um, for taking the time out to educate our community and get us all on the same page of, of, of where we are um, and, and where you are in making these really critical decisions. And uh, what is very obvious from tonight's discussion is that youth marijuana education is as important, if not more important than ever. So I just encourage all of our attendees to, um, to become a member of CASA and to keep an eye out for CASA events in the upcoming months um, on marijuana education. I hope when, when school starts, we can do more CASA coffees in person, uh, really focusing in on this topic. And I encourage you all to attend. So with that, I just uh, thank everybody for participating tonight. And I bid you all good night. Thank you. Thank you. Night. Thank you. Night. Good to see you all. Good night. Thank you all.